Hey guys, and welcome back to Valkyria Chronicles. We're here in the headquarters because we got stuff to buy. The best upgrade ever! Welcome, bro. How you doing? I'm here to get some stuff. Okay, let's see. What can we get? It's been a while since I... Ah, okay, so we can get everything. Awesome. Um, I have... I think I have a little bit more money. I went ahead and grinded for a little bit, so... um. You know, just so I had a bit of more money for these guns and stuff. Because I don't really know why I care this much, but I actually want to get all the guns in the game this time. Because I've never actually done that. Okay, that's done. Anti-tank lances. Ah, here we go. Uh, this is the alternate version of the lance. An enhanced mortar. As you can see, for a lance, you've only got 150 versus person. But with this, you have 320 this is basically an infantry tank mortar. Here you go, bro. So, if you want to use your lancers for killing infantry, you can do that. So, that, I think that's pretty cool. How, you know, they actually give you two different types of lances. I mostly just stick to, um... You know, the anti-tank stuff. But, occasionally, I might give one of the lancers I don't use that often a, uh... Um, a mortar, just to have some variety, you know what I mean? Uh, okay, no new snipers. Flamethrowers? No. Hand grenades? No. Uniforms? Aha, I knew it. And this is way cheaper than the friggin', uh, guns. It's only 5,000 for armor. You'd think it'd be just about as expensive, but no, I guess they don't care about armor. Okay, so, now... The big one, Edelweiss, Reinforced Body 2, Body HP 300, Tread HP 200, Tread Defense 50, AP 100. Oh yeah, this is basically the elite upgrade for the tank, so now you can move farther. Oh my god, that's so, so nice. Uh, Tread and other stuff, don't care. Accuracy! Rotating periscope, bitches. Okay. Oh. Oh, and it, ah, that's the other thing. When you get that huge upgrade, that happens. You get more space to add um thingies. So yeah, I'm gonna have to move some stuff to get this one in there. So hang on, I'm gonna have to um outfit my tank a bit. Change parts. So um. Oh, this is how you can remove stuff. All you gotta do is just go over here. And, uh, hang on, wait. Um, well, okay, that was it. Basically, you just go over here and uh, you select whatever part you want to remove. Select it, and then hit circle. That's it. So it is very, very easy to um, change out parts and stuff. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and add this. And I'll go ahead and get this. 28 accuracy, jeez. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this there. Extra magazine, rear magazine. Hey, I could add this. Oh, but wait, I never used that. So here, I'll do this one. And then bulletproof visor. Alright, so now we have f plus 40 accuracy. Awesome. And hell, I could always take off this magazine and fiddle around with this if I ever need to add even more accuracy because I think there's actually <clears throat> let me see I think there's one more thing that you can get for accuracy tax support yep there's one more thing of accuracy that we can get so who knows maybe I'll get that too because <laughs> why not so that's all the weapons and stuff and I think I might actually put a mortar on uh, one of my one of my lancers, or two of my lancers, I'm not sure. Actually, you know what? I got it. Okay. I'm gonna give Largo and, um, Largo and Hector will have the lances, and then these two, Walter and, um, Walter and Niels will have, uh, mortars. So how about that? Because I, I only trust Lloyd Irving with a rocket launcher. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Nobody else 
these two, you get the mortars. I don't trust you guys with the with the lances, but you, Lloyd Irving and Largo, I trust you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna check everything else just to be just to be safe. You know, I don't want to miss out on anything. Because it's been a week or two since I've played. I don't know if I've uh, missed anything or not. Okay. Uh, anything new? No? Okay. I think, honestly, I remember having another report already unlocked. But maybe I don't. Uh, audience hall? Anything new here? Sorry, I know this is five minutes of the video, but whatever. Oh, okay, no. It warms my heart to see you well. Oh, that's it? Already on your way back to base? Time is a fickle friend indeed. May you Oh, okay, so you just you just go there, it fades to black, and then you leave. <laughs> okay. Um I don't have any experience to spend on the war cemetery, so I'm just gonna leave. But I remember having a report unlocked. Do I? Or no? I guess I don't, because then there would be another tab on the other side or whatever. So, uh, let's get back to the story. Last time we had just finished the Liberation of Thousand, and now uh, Liberation Eternal. forced everyone to go into this building, then set it on fire. For what? She was just a kid. Somebody tell me who did this. I'll tear their stinking heads off! And what would that accomplish? Revenge! That's what? Fight fire with fire? An eye for an eye? Didn't enough people die today? Even if our traditions lead us to death at the hands of others, we don't respond with violence. When we die, we die for peace. That is how the Darkson live their lives. Now those lives are gone. Forever. But... why? I could hate them. Maybe even kill them. But that wouldn't bring those people back. All I can really do... is try to survive and help the ones who are still here. Be other survivors. Everybody, help us look. So is the rest of Squad Seven not going to help? Because I didn't see any of them. Lazy bastards. A new comrade. Gee, I wonder who it could be. Thanks in part to Squad 7's efforts, militia forces reclaimed the city of Fausen. Returning from battle, the squad's members enjoyed a brief and well-deserved respite. Thanks in part to Squad 7's effort? That was all me! I was walking across base just now, and the guys from Squad 2 stopped me. They said everybody felt like we got Fausen back because of us 7s. Yeah, they did! Well, yeah. We took down that train, after all. I want a medal. I wonder how Zaka and everyone are doing. 
I hear most of the detainees have either stayed on in Fausen or evacuated to Rangri's. Oh. Well, I hope they're all doing well now. Yo. M Mr. Zaka? Huh? Wait, that uniform. Oh, this? As of today, I'm a Gallian militia man, same as you. They put me in your squad, so we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Wait, just a... Can you even fight? What was all that about living the Darkson way? Eh, don't sweat the details, right? And I've got experience as a tank commander. My ride's on the smaller side, but you can leave the ground unit support to me. And I thought your boss was pretty righteous. I figured I'd tag along and see for myself. What? Me? Well, we didn't get to talk much, but you've got a fresh perspective, you know? Hmm. I guess so. I don't think I'm much different than other folks, though. Welkin, you're so clueless. Anyhow, I'm excited to join the team. <laughs> huh. What? We just got another tank! What are you complaining about? Chapter 11. The Marbury Shore. A new episode! Personnel tab! Glossary tab! Skirmish bat. Oh! Ah! Uh. Upper Thousand is a skirmish fight. The only the thing is, uh, in the skirmish fight, there's no train. So, that's your one saving grace. You don't have to deal with the train. So, yeah. I'm not doing this right now. Um, I'm gonna, you know, just like always, I'm gonna train with it off screen until I've learned it well enough. So, yeah. Not doing that now. Um, select episode. Yes. Okay. Uh, peril on the coastline. Everybody gather round. I've got our orders. The target is on Galia's northern coast. The enemy's entrenched along the shore flanking the industrial region up north. Squad 7 has been given one of their camps at Marbury to suppress. Hmm. Looking at the map, seems there's nothing there but big cliffs and open sand. As you approach the cliffs, the beach slopes up steeply. Their camp is at the top. The path leading up there is narrow, meaning infantry will have to take the lead here. That said, they've lined the cliffside with gunnery to combat incoming foot soldiers. You telling us to dodge bullets running across an open beach with nothing for cover? Boss, I may be catty, but I ain't got nine lives here. Stop your complaining. We're soldiers, Rosie. Ain't no such thing as a safe mission. Dangerous or not, it's our job to get the job done as best we can. You don't gotta... I know that, all right? You're right. If we just charge in, you'll be facing a hailstorm of bullets. Welkin, any more brilliant ideas for another of your crazy plans? Hmm. Sorry, but... I don't have any silver bullets for this one. What we need is some way to blind the enemy while we advance. A way to... blind them. Ugh, this is just great. Come on, let's stay positive about this. Tomorrow's the Feast of All Spirits. Combat on the feast, huh? We sure got some kind of luck, don't we? Well, getting down about it now won't help anything. Let's just do what we can. If we could... Hmm. They may not need nine lives. Uh, Isara, you want to speak up? That sounds... That sounds like it's important stuff there you're 
thinking about. <laughs> you want to chime in here? You don't have to wait until it... Never mind. Anyway, the Feast of All Spirits. Somebody said tomorrow's the feast, right? I forgot all about it this year. Hey now, do you guys even know the reason for this holiday? Reason? It's the day you give presents to the guy you like, ain't it? Yes, but no. The Feast of All Spirits is the day all the spirits in Galia share their love. They say the practice of giving gifts to those you love came from that belief. Back in the day, people gave presents to everyone important to them, not just lovers. Bingo! Give the man a prize! For a big grizzly bear, you sure know your stuff. How gracious of you to say. <laughs> Though I like to think I'm more of a teddy bear. Largo, Rosie, may I have a moment? Sure. I'm surprised to see you in the lounge. What's up? Would you accept these gifts? This is... from before. These dolls are darks and good luck charms. I wanted to give them to you and Rosie. Why to us? I... I've always wanted to be your friend, from the first day. We may have had our share of disagreements, but you've helped me more than I can say. I'd like to use the feast as an opportunity to grow a little closer to both of you. I see. You know, seeing Fausen gave me a lot to think about. Plus, I... you know... I've been wanting to talk to you for a while now, too. For being so young, you got some perspective. Still a little bullheaded, though. Thanks for the lucky charm. And for coming out here, Isara. Largo, thank you so much. I... I can't take it. Rosie, you ain't a kid here. Quit being so damn stubborn already. You shut it. I just... Look, I got no need for presents from dark hairs, okay? I understand. I'm sorry. I'll be on my way now. Yeah, I think I'm done too. Look, I know you've been wanting to apologize. Just out and say it already, damn it. Look, shut up. I know, okay? I know, but I. I can't just change overnight. I'm not that big a person. And swapping to a, a rather, well, maybe not serious note, but just another story note, that's another scene that I really, really like. That, you know how Rosie was bitchy in, in the beginning of the game? You know, she's, she was a racist. You know, she was raised a racist. She was raised to hate Darksons and stuff like that. That one line right there, um, oh, what was it? Oh, I forgot the full line, but... I'm not that big a person. I, oh, I can't change overnight. I'm not that big a person. That is a great line. That, for me, personally, that redeems Rosie's racism in the whole beginning of the game. That one line redeems all of it. Because if I can go on a little bit of a tangent here, sorry to waste time, but um, uh, I can personally relate to that because... Um, you know, for me, I was raised in a Christian family where, you know, we were raised to think that gay people were stupid. Well, not stupid, but they were wrong. You know, they were disgusting. You know, they're, they're bad. You know, I was raised to think that. I don't think that now. Don't worry. I have nothing against it. Hell, I, I have an open disgust for homophobes at this point. But I was raised 
to think that, you know? And, um, over time, you know, I met, you know, I met other people online and we would play games together. And every now and then, um, a, oh, that was so gay would slip out. You know, we would use gay for like a synonym for stupid or bad. That's just how we were raised. I would, I did that for like a couple more years. The thing is, I didn't do it because I thought it was true at that point. I had no problem with gay people even at that point. I wasn't doing it because I thought gay people were bad. I just did it because I was raised that way. It was just so ingrained in my mind. You know what I mean? So that line is just so good. It's so human. Because when you're raised to think something, changing that mentality is so difficult. You know what I mean? When you've been raised for years, more than a decade, to think one thing, and then you need to change that mindset, it's difficult. It's not easy. So I love that line from Rosie. Anyway, sorry to go on a long tangent there. Um, I'm going to end it off. And next time, we will uh, continue these cutscenes, and we will get straight to the mission. So see you then.